This guy. Rotary Turbo 07 on YouTube. I haven't released a video in quite a long time. I wanted to show my gunky NES, which I have stereo converted. This has been easily, you know, 15, 20 years has been a thing, but this is the first one that I've actually attempted. It's a simple circuit, only a few components. And at the moment, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, you see these capacitors are electrolytics, aside from the fact that I built this entirely out of used components. So what I failed to notice is this capacitor back here that takes the mono signal and mixes it between the two channels that are coming off of the CPU. I used a bipolar capacitor, which is not electronically polarized, positive and negative, like the regular electrolytic is. Therefore, it doesn't really do any kind of function in the circuit. I'm getting pure stereo separation off of the processor, but it does work in a way. It's just this potentiometer here which is designed to control the stereo separation, doesn't actually work. But I'm sure that once I fix that, it will. But it, aside from the, the actual modification, worked out beautifully. Sound comes out of both channels, and sound out of each channel is entirely different. But it just sounds weird. That's why this potentiometer was put into the circuit by the guy who originally designed it. I got this off a website called RAFNET, I think it was. I can put that link in the description. But, uh, this site's been around for at least 10 or 15 years. And uh, this is the simplest one that, one of the original ones that were first devised for stereo, stereo modding in NES. There are better circuits now that involve a few more components. But I did the simple circuit just to try it out. <clears throat> and I've got, like I said, pure stereo separation right now. I can't mix in any mono to make it sound better. But it sounds halfway decent. In the NES, I chose kind of a junky looking one that's... I've actually washed this. <laughs> it was terrible. But, uh, it's one that's been... It's got crack spots on it. It's stained, discolored. I could attempt the, uh, Retro Bright Gel to brighten the white back up, or the beige back up, but this one I'm going to actually custom paint, I believe. It'll be easier to do because I have to actually do a little bit of work to fix this crack on the corner. But other than that, it's actually a functional NES. And I was going to make that in the side to this video to actually demonstrate it working. In mono, of course, this is the original RCA outputs. This, if you have a, a factory original NES, you want to use this type of setup. And for a modern TV, you can't play Duck Hunt. You have to have one of these CRTs. I highly recommend getting a small one if you don't have space for a bigger one to put it in the closet. Get a little bigger one if you can, they look a little bit better. But these small ones generally produce a pretty good picture. And you can play your games the way they were supposed to be played. play Mario if you want. On CRTs, if you aim this gun at a flat screen, it's going to be like you're not aiming a gun at all. It's going to do this. With a CRT, you can actually play games. Like Duck Hunt or any other kind of fight gun games, Zephyr games. I probably can't aim from this angle. <laughs> but yeah, CRTs are the way to go if you want to play any kind of a Zapper game. It's basically the only way to go. I think somebody at one point determined that you can use some flat screen CRTs or maybe plasmas, things like that, but you cannot use LCDs or projectors or something like that. There was Somebody did a test trying to figure out how to use one, but the basic idea is this CRT projecting its picture has zero lag between here and there, whereas an LCD has a few milliseconds and this thing cannot differentiate that difference between the game program and the actual light gun itself. That screen blanks out 
there's a little black square which you can sometimes see with the naked eye or you can see it on camera as well when somebody's playing duck hunt and recording it. And that is why these don't work on modern TVs, but these CRTs are either cheap or free a lot of times. And they will make your life a lot better because you get to play it like it was originally played back in the day. I really enjoy mine a lot. I think it's worth having the space to keep one just to set it aside in the closet, a little 13, 14 inch like this. They're very nice. And if you wanted to go through the extra trouble, they actually make, there were some uh, professional video monitors that are actually higher quality than a standard home CRT, higher resolution tubes. They're, they're very, very nice. They're like a hundred bucks maybe, but in this kind of a size, or you can get really big ones, like 20 inch ones, or like four or five hundred bucks. But uh, anyway, the whole, the original idea behind this was the stereo monitor the NES. I can do even a quick demonstration of that if I had a little more cable. Let's see, right now, I'll hook this back up. You might be able to. See if you can differentiate the tones. It's actually two different sounds being mixed in together from the CPU. And what I've did is I've split those. And hook this up to a modern stereo television. You can hear the different sounds coming out of each speaker. That is the basic gist. The circuit as I've done it, I have zero dollars in if I were to buy these items. Uh, this would be the trickiest bit, is I've actually used a panel mounted RCA, which you can get once cheaper. Uh, I don't know, there might be ten dollars in components, if that, ten, fifteen dollars in components, depending on how you order it. It's a worthwhile mod to do on your old school NES if you have one you don't mind drilling some holes into.